This video is part of the New Hampshire Astronomical Society's Library Telescope Program, a program in which we've placed astronomical telescopes into public libraries to be borrowed just like a book. The purpose of this video is planning the observation session that you might go through with the library telescope. The first thing I did uh, before uh, using the library telescope is uh, I went through it, I learned all of the parts of the scope, uh, I learned how to use it, how, to fun how it functions. Uh, one of the things uh, I learned how to do, and it's important to be able to do, is to uh, sight in the easy finder so that the red dot that I see through the easy finder will uh, be right on the object that I will end up seeing in the middle of my field of view when I look through the telescope. I've done that already, so I know that this telescope uh, is ready to go. The place I've chosen for my viewing session is a park, and I've chosen a park because of the wide open space and the uh, large amount of sky that I have available to me. It's a little overcast right now, but it is supposed to be clearing by the time I'm ready to observe. And if it doesn't, uh, I certainly will come back another time. Uh, another benefit of the park is that I have a picnic table available to me to set the telescope on. That means I don't have to bring a chair or a table uh, of my own to put, the, to put the telescope on. Getting ready for an evening of viewing. Um, I have a cooler that has snacks and beverages in it. Um, I have with me a, a sketch pad to uh, illustrate maybe some of the things that I see through the telescope that I want to uh, kind of remember. The telescope comes with, uh, with a, a, an Audubon Society constellation guide. Um, I also have a planisphere. And the purpose of a planisphere is to show you the uh, map of the sky as it is at the time you're viewing. You just simply dial in the date and the time uh, together on the planisphere and it will show you a map of the sky at that particular point. This is going to be very helpful in, uh, in finding objects that I want to view in the sky. As a matter of fact, I would also suggest that uh, you spend some time with a planisphere before even using the telescope. It's a great way to learn the sky. It's a great way to find constellations and then find different stars that are associated with those constellations. This planisphere, besides having stars and constellations, it indicates some of the deep sky objects that uh, might be available to see through the telescope. And that's what I'm interested in doing tonight. Uh, I've used the telescope already to see the moon, and I've seen the rings of Saturn with this telescope. Very, very uh, neat things to see. But I want to now uh, focus on some deep sky objects. And uh, when you get to that point, it's really good to have some kind of a plan. Uh, tonight, my plan is two targets that I want to I want to locate. I want to locate a globular cluster called M13, and I want to locate uh, another galaxy uh, called M31. And both of these objects uh, are indicated on my planisphere. So that's going to be a, a great help to me. Now, if I need to refer to the planisphere after it's dark, uh, another piece of equipment that comes with the telescope uh, is, the, uh, is the headlight here. Uh, it's a white light and it's a red light. White light for when you just need some uh, you know, light to clean, to, uh, to clean up and uh, you know, take care of things. But uh, a red light. Uh, so that you can read things and read charts uh, without losing the dark adaptiveness of your eyes. So that's, uh, that's very handy as well. So, M13, a globular cluster. It's, uh, it's a collection, a conglomeration of hundreds of thousands of stars all in one area. Through a telescope, it looks like a faint snowball in space, and I'm interested in seeing that. And to find that, uh, I have to recognize what stars it's nearby, and the planisphere makes that a very easy thing to do. I know the configuration of stars uh, that are nearby that M13 globular cluster, and uh, I should be able, I can see them with a the naked eye, I can see those stars that are associated with it, 
So all I then do uh, is uh, find those stars, find that area where M13 should be with my easy finder. And put the red dot right where my chart says M13 should be located. If, uh, if I do that successfully, I should be able to look through the eyepiece of the telescope and M13 should be right dead center in my field of view. If it isn't right in my field of view, I certainly can maneuver the telescope around a little bit and, and, see if, uh, and see if I can find it. The same thing with the Andromeda galaxy. It's in the constellation of Andromeda. And I know where that galaxy is in relation to stars that I can see. And so I look at those stars and I point the telescope with the easy finder toward that spot in the sky where the Andromeda galaxy should be. And uh, if I'm right, again, it should be right dead center in my, uh, in my field of view. So I sort of star hop to uh, where I want to uh, see particular objects. And if I've got enough time, I might, uh, I might try to find uh, a few more objects. So uh, that's basically my plan for this evening. And again, I've got a sketch pad to, uh, to sketch uh, some of the objects that I, that I might see. And, uh, and then go back and find those objects, say, and I'll Google them and see what they look like uh, uh, through telescopes like the, the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, so that's my plan, and uh, it's, it's a little bit of planning ahead of time, and, uh, and viewing with the library telescope uh, can, uh, can be very rewarding. Thanks a lot, and clear skies.